This video is a three-part series on what I consider to be my principles of teaching English as a second language. If you're an ESL teacher who works with kids or you want to work with kids, but you're frustrated because you feel that the kids are just not learning what you're teaching, if you feel they are pooping out mid-lesson or maybe you're losing control of the class, then this video is for you. I'm going to be going through things that I consider that you should not do during an ESL classroom and I'll also give you some great alternatives to do instead. So make sure you stick around till the end. Hi, I'm Adriana. Welcome back to my channel where you can find tips and tricks for teaching English to young children. Communication is key. When you're working with younger children, you can't use the same techniques you would use with older children. Older children and young teenagers understand that every language has its own set of rules, its own grammar, but younger kids, they don't understand that. They learn language because they trust you and they trust you because they have a relationship with you and they have a relationship with you because you communicate. It's kind of like a dog that is chasing its own tail. You can't have one without the other. So I want to look at some of the things that are going to hinder that relationship. Some of the things you should not do. Let's go check them out. Don't pretend you don't understand your students when they speak to you in their own language. It's frustrating and demotivating. The equivalent of being ignored and terrible for their self-esteem. Don't switch from one language to another when teaching. You risk confusing the kids grammatically. Don't translate what you're saying into the kids' native language. Kids learn new words through context, not translation. Don't only speak to your group or elicit group answers because you'll never know who is actually participating and who's not. Now that you know what not to do, try this instead. Okay, the first thing, always acknowledge what your kids are saying, even if it's in their own language. Don't insist on having them repeat um, the new words or the sentences in English or whatever language it is you're teaching. Just listen to what they say and bounce it back in the language that you want them to learn. By acknowledging what they are saying, it shows that you have interest in this child and that's great for their self-esteem. And remember, we're social creatures and that is what motivates us to speak. Shifting back and forth between languages when you're teaching a second language is not ideal because not only can you risk having a delay in the target language, you may have a delay in the native language as well. Language is made up of rules. Children are not able to understand the rule per se if you explain it to them, but they are able to apply it. For example, adjective position. In English, the adjective comes before the noun, but in Latin languages or Romance languages, I should say, the adjective comes after the noun. And although they do understand that there are different words to say the same thing, but what they don't understand when you mix languages is when do I put, when do I say red car and when do I say car red? So what we're getting is total confusion of the grammar and that can delay language development in general. So what can you do? Use examples when presenting new words and make sure you also stress new words too. Translation is a trick that young children don't use because it is a study skill. And in fact, young children don't even have the cognitive skills to make those study skills. So translating doesn't work. What is going to work though, is to find a curriculum that offers activities that are going to develop the learning skills of the child those exact skills that are going to be useful for building study skills. That type of curriculum when teaching a second language is going to yield much better results. Speaking to the entire group can sometimes be acceptable, but make sure you don't make a habit out of it. Use the children's names in sentences instead. Speak to each child individually. When a child hears his or her name among those sounds, words, that they don't understand, they realize that you are not just making a bunch of sounds, you're actually trying to communicate with them. And make sure to always have eye contact too. It's not so easy to goof off if, if the teacher is looking at you, right? And lastly, get yourself a good method. Um, just because you know the language or you're young and peppy, that's not enough to teach kids. You need to have a solid method behind you, an efficient method that is going to allow you to communicate with the kids in a way that they understand and doesn't make them feel, feel 
ill at ease. My method is going to be launching really soon internationally and I'm really excited about that. Um, mum's the word for a little while longer yet, but if you want to know a little more about it, I'm going to drop a link in the description box below. These are just some of the do's and don'ts of teaching ESL to children, but there are more. And if you want to know more, make sure to check out these videos right here. And if they're not up, stay tuned because they will be soon. Meanwhile, check out this playlist down here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.